who actually recycle anything today? Or actually feel like they recycle something today? Okay, or, or anyone's wearing recycled product that you might coming up here and show me that you're wearing 100% recycled products? Okay, uh, I mean, I really can't see anybody, but, uh, but in general, uh, why is it so important to be made 100% from recycled material, and why is it so important to be 100% single material? Um, I mean, we talk about design, we want sexy products, yes, but why is this so important to all of us today? Um, I think that's a question uh, I think the, the organization who asked me to present today is about some of the crazy moonshot projects we have been doing using 100% trash, okay? Um, so first of all, what I'm wearing, at least it's trying to be 100% made from single material. It's already made 100% made from trash, okay? And so I just go straight into something that's kind of crazy we recently did. Um, this is a pavilion uh, in the Thailand airport, uh, Bangkok airport, okay? It's made with one point, like half a million PET bottles, plastic bottles turning that into a um, two, uh, 2,000 denier uh, recycled PET yarn that can take 450 pa of tensile strength, okay? And also, um, it's powered by air, okay? We invented a new system of calculating how to calculate a mechanical structure to be supported only with air, okay? And we actually built a... Uh, uh, digital sensor to be able to control the pneumatic pressure inside the structure. So it's linking that to the environment. So every time there's too much wind, too much rain, the structure actually becomes stiffer or lighter. As it, so it's like a breathing structure. Okay, and the, r right now they're just showing you quickly what we can build with eight pillars and it can be done in a day, okay, in the actual construction site of a 2,000 square meter pavilion. Okay, but I mean, it looks cool as a structure. It's recently just opened by the king, so it has to go, th um, ha has to go through the most stringent structure engineering, okay? Uh, it has to have all the durability that's needed, and, but most importantly, it has to be half of a price of a conventional superstructure, okay? 2,000 square meter, you can do the math. Um, it has to be below 500 US dollar per square meter. Okay, it also has to be, that's like $50 a square foot. That is cheaper than Walmart. Uh, a tin box, typical metal box, cheap retail. Okay, this is the problem we are facing today. First of all, three things that kills sustainability or kills full circularity. One is trash contamination during transportation. First of all, it's expensive to haul trash around. It's also expensive to make them not contaminated. It takes forever and so much energy to separate them properly later, okay? The second thing is transformation. What can we turn that into? Can that be something that's actually you, can, you want to use? Can that turn into the sexy car we just saw earlier? Only with trash. That is a technology that's also missing. The last part is lack of scale. I think this is super critical, like lack of scale. And then sustainability is also completely unnecessary to today's economy. Really, it's, it's not necessary. There's, um, just because you use green product doesn't mean you're going to have better sales, right? So it's just because today you're selling a coffee doesn't mean uh, your consumer will buy into it just because you're trying to be sustainable. Unfortunately, that's the truth. And this unnecessary... Um, the, non-necessity of what we do with recycled material is one of the things. But look, this is what we really care about. Is that compared to a traditional building system, we do life cycle analysis, that's a footprint savings for water and air. That's what we really care about. We do this for Starbucks. Just a couple examples of crazy stuff uh, that we do, uh, all with 
all mechanical structure, everything can be separated. So the third life and the fourth life can use the material again and re recycle again. Post consumer recycle alum aluminum, post some consumer recycle uh, polypropylene, and post recycle um, polyester. And we try to do that in Milan, uh, try to, in our own office, within our own way, to show people that everything we can collect from the local fashion waste. Uh, in every year, there's so much design week, fashion week, we can turn all that waste into something that's presentable in our own office. From the chandelier, to the tables, to the chairs, to the bricks, to the, the uh, bed sheets, to the pillows, to the... And all this requires lots of smart engineering. As you can imagine, it's about changing the temperature of a material so you're able to do all this crazy shape, weld them together without so much stitching, just by adding heat, okay? So without adding new additional coating, okay? So this is some of the things that we do a lot. And so we did this with Xenia and Bonotto in Milan also um, to create a fantasized garden made from trash from you know, the fake flower, the fake trees, all the way to the vertical gardens, all made from trash. Um, a 50 meters uh, tapestry, non-repeated. So here's some crazy moonshot project, and that's why we're here in Singapore today, is that w the government recently, uh, in January, launches the Zero Waste Initiative. Zero waste for a city, that's crazy. I, I, that's the first thing is, uh, that's crazy, okay? Any city is gonna turn into a zero waste city. That's mean everything they produce or use has to be completely fully re recyclable. Wow, I was like that. Where are you gonna do this in Singapore? And this is one of the solutions that we come up with is a solar power portable recycling plant. All the energy use is collected re renewably, okay, and all the water and air is all being self-recycled within the whole system. So it's literally a circular plant in miniature form. And just quickly, we have lots of these machines as we are, these are designed for a community, a soccer event. It's designed for a community of housing to be able to take out the trash and be able to turn it into all kinds of different products. Um, so you basically take the trash, you sort it with human, okay, not machine, and then, um, going in there with uh, different settings, so you can uh, adjust for different type of material being re-recycled, and then you can clean it. This is a glorified washing machine, okay? You can clean it, shred it, and you can heat it, and just controlling the pressure and the air and the heat. You can control different type of texture for the final products. It turns into, we did that with uh, London city government. We, we did that with Jackie Chan and the Chinese government in. Uh, Tibet, uh, we, by the way, there's a lot of trash also in Tibet, um, uh, and Milan, with the city government of Milan. Uh, we take, then we take that, we turn that into a brick. And then here's a quick video of what it does. Join Jackie Chan, international superstar, and Arthur Huang, Nat Geo's emerging explorer and structural engineer. Together they'll embark on a new adventure of eco-friendly innovations and cutting-edge green technology. Jackie Chan's Green Heroes, Wednesday night at 10 on National Geographic. Okay, so then what would you do with that material? We turn that into schools. We build schools with the trash. Okay, that becomes architecture. This is how we solve the scale problem of the number three I just mentioned. The scale problem, because you have lots of building surfaces, takes a lot of trash away. And right now, what we are piloting in Singapore is a smart AI collection bin, okay? This trash collection bin is trying to use uh, all this digital data, I hate that stuff, uh, data, AI technology, but can we do that, use it for good, for scale? Because right now, recycling is a dirty business. Nobody knows what's going on in there. Can we use the camera? to pick out the right type of behavior, urban behavior, to reward them with a proper point, to when you clean the trash properly, when you separate properly, and can you reward them and turn that into a new economy? 
So, and so this is basically a system that we're launching in Singapore, and you will see a lot of this coming in Singapore and in Milan this year for the Salone. And I want to just, uh, this is, a, I'm a, like an engineering geek, and uh, I think this is super exciting for me. This machine is in rendering form, but it's actually already there, and we are doing a set of testing uh, just yesterday. Um, this is what we are launching in Singapore and in um, April and May. Um, you can take trash to directly collect it from the AI uh, collection bin. Okay, this is um, polypropylene. This is the most common food packaging material. Okay, you go to Starbucks, you find this. This is polystyrene, which is all kinds of, from coffee lids all the way to espresso cups, all kinds of champagne, champagne disposable glasses. You can quickly turn that into quite a decent product, literally in four minutes with this machine, okay? And so, and this is the first test. Of course, this is completely like crappy right now, but hopefully by in a month in Milan, uh, we will show something that was quite Reason. But what's interesting is all this is digital technology. You, anybody can send a file, okay? They can CNC a mole right away. We have a software and the machine and the data. You're able to enter that into a machine and just carve out a new mole. I can press into a new product right away, okay? So this is super interesting. Of course, then in Singapore, we have a set of micro factory that's trying to collect fashion waste, fa uh, fabric waste, plastic waste, metal waste, and we want to be able to manufacture it locally. I would say this is a moonshot. The world-class city, one of the richest cities in the world, is trying to be a trash management company. Okay, so that's interesting. Here, it says, here are some leftover moonshot projects. We are actually quite crazy. So we're also doing that in Taiwan for R&D. We're also doing the R&D also in Singapore. Um, this is where all the data and software system we are turning um, into a carbon uh, fiber-like material, single material, only re using recycled polyesters. And we built a boat, by the way. Moonshot project always fail. Uh, by, uh, this boat actually sank. That's why the crane is holding the boat to, to, to dry, actually. Uh, that's the material fail, actually. But we decided we want to go even further into Moonshot project from that R&D, from that material you saw with uh, um, a carbon fiber-like polyester. We, went to t we are building an airplane right now We're using the Burt Rutan old design in the 1970s. And this follows with the National Geographic TV shows. So hopefully you will, won't see me very soon, only on TV screens, uh, as a pioneer that fell off the sky with trash, which is very highly likely too. So anyway, so there it is. That's the presentation. Hopefully get your... Uh, my excited about what we can do with trash in the future. Thank you.